are your feelings about the general functionality of a six-man rotation in modern Major League Baseball? I think it's, uh, in talking in more narrow terms, like our situation, is certainly something to consider. Um, as far as where Major League Baseball is going with starting pitching, to if it more functional at a, a six-man, I think it totally depends on the makeup of your team and your rotation. Some guys uh, have proven that they're not as functional with too much rest um, in Major League Baseball. And some guys thrive on the extra day. So I think that there's a lot of variables still to say does it make sense or, or doesn't make sense. I think in individual cases with teams, it's going to make more sense than other teams. So. Like in, in the broader sense, where Major League Baseball is going to a six-man rotation from where they went four to five, you know, 50 years ago, um, I don't know if we're at that point or not. As far as your own roster, the you know, suitability for that, are you still assessing it? Or how, yeah, you it's certainly something to consider, yes. Could you, could you see yourself on opening day unveiling a six-man rotation? Uh, I don't think we've made any decision yet, but there's a lot of things being considered. Have you talked to any of your other starters about this, this concept? Um, not, uh, not so much as to, I think if we get close and we, we think it's something that's going to help us, I think we will totally introduce it to everybody so they can be understanding how, you know, how that whole mechanism in rotation can work. But uh, at this point, we're internally trying to assess it and see. Um, We'll just see where we're going to be. How much of a challenge for you do you think it will be to balance both of Otani's endeavors next season? I don't think it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be a challenge. I think it'll be an opportunity to use some creativity. I don't think that um, it's going to be a situation where you have to do this or you have to do that. Um, in baseball, you'd much rather have parts you're trying to use than to try to find parts to use. So I think uh, with Shohei, there's there's going to be a balance there of uh, pitching and hitting, and you know, we'll assess it and go into spring training, have an idea, and make sure he's ready in spring training with enough at bats and certainly pitch count to be where it needs to be, and uh, and, and hopefully hit the hit the season, hit the ground running. Are so you? Do you handle him in spring training any differently at the start because of uh, the elbow injury? Um, no, I think that's uh, you know uh, I think that's past him and our understanding is there's uh, no restrictions at all going to spring training and uh, he'll be down there plenty of time and be ready to go. I like your time, man. You're, you out-tied me. I thought I was, I thought I had to tie, I would win the tie game, but I don't know. That was, that was pretty good. Do you expect him the normal like six turns through in spring training? Uh, I would think um, you know, spring training is a little bit, um, a little tighter this year because of report dates. Um, <laughs> But I think that uh, in most of the projections we have and with, with split squads and the availability to pitch in the minor leagues, to be ready, that um, you're looking at, uh, you will be looking at definitely six starts. And I think we would vote as small and shorter than that. Do you feel confident that uh, he can be productive enough to hit all year, or is it going to be sort of a month-to-month -month evaluation? <coughs> well, I mean, you know, I think, I think any player is... Uh, you know, when they're struggling, they might lose a little bit of time. When they're doing well, they might get more time. So how that flow is going to go, we don't have a crystal ball. But we definitely have the confidence that this guy can swing the bat, um, that he can impact you on the offensive side, and also be a uh, front-line starter. So there's a lot of things to consider. In the last week of the season, you said that offensive improvements were definitely needed for your club as it went to 2018. Obviously, Otani has potential at the plate. Do you feel like further offensive improvements are still in need? Yes. I think one of them is signing Justin Upton. We saw you know, Justin Upton hit, what, 30 how many home runs last year? A lot of them. You only hit, what, I think five or six for us? I'm not sure. He hit a lot. Though. He hit a lot. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But I'm saying for us. So you're going from, you know, yeah, you go from left fielder who hit six for us to hopefully left fielder is going to hit 36 for us this year. So. So uh, some of it is, um, I think some of it is starting to fill that basket, and uh, but I do, I do see more, and I think we'll get there. Do you think that having a deeper lineup could uh, give you the opportunity to give Kudos maybe a few more days off, and if you do that, he could be more productive when he does play? Um, with any player, you're going to balance uh, 
days off with not breaking their rhythm if they're going well. Um, I don't think, uh, I certainly don't think there was anybody on our roster that was um, you know, running to the ground last year. Guys, when they need days off, they got it. We had a lot of guys that played a lot of baseball. Um, but I don't think it would be any different than any other player. How important do you think it is for Albert to improve his physical conditioning this winter? Well, he's working on it, and I think he will. I think a lot's been said about Albert, and um, a lot's been said about the minimization of driving and runs, but I can tell you that's an important part of, of, our, uh, of what our team needs, and Albert drove in a lot of them for us last year. So as far as like where he needs to be this year, sure, I think um, he's going to get a full off-season of conditioning as, in, as opposed to rehab. So you would expect that to lead to um, him coming to spring training uh, with a little more strength than he maybe had before when he was rehabbing. Um, how important it is to his production, um, you know, he knocked in over 105 runs for us last year. And if he comes in and, um, and he's a little stronger earlier because he's in better shape, uh, you know, you can look for the same production. What would you like to level of concern and what is your understanding of just uh, no restrictions uh, with, with Shohei. Um, uh, the understanding that we have is really just um, something that's behind him. There's no concern, and uh, there's no restrictions. He'll be full go in spring training. Does, does the idea of a possible six-man uh, rotation you know, help with him in this transition? Uh, well, it's something we're considering. I think, uh, you know, as we just said, I think some rotations. Um, function better with pitchers pitching on normal rest, five days rest, which has become the norm, um, or should I say four days rest, pitching on the fifth day. Some guys uh, certainly have a track record of being more effective um, when that happens. Um, with, uh, with Shohei, there's a lot of things we're going to consider about how many starts he's going to get and where he's going to fit in our rotation. We haven't made any determination, but certainly something to consider. Billy has described the, the six-man idea as a sort of moral responsibility he feels to keep pitchers healthy and if <coughs> keeping them on a, on a more elongated uh, schedule will keep them healthy than he feels that he has to do it. Where do you stand on that sort of issue? Well, I don't think it's something we're considering. Billy hasn't, in our conversations, hasn't, hasn't said anything about something he has to do that we have to do. Uh -huh. It's something we're considering. Do you think it keeps pitchers healthier? Um, There'll be less workload for a pitcher. Um, I don't think you ever put a pitcher out there at risk. And there's a lot of pitchers that have handled 200 innings a year, 33 starts, and never look back. They're, they're fine with it. Um, and there are some pitchers that have a problem getting the 170 innings. It might, uh, it might be neutral as far as keeping some guys healthy, but make them less effective. It might be a positive in keeping some guys more effective, uh, excuse, more health or healthier, and might make them more effective. So I don't know if there's any macro that you're going to set up right now and say it's definitely going to be best to have a six-man rotation. It's something we're considering, and, and uh, there's a lot of things we're considering. How difficult would it be to go all or most of the year with the 13 pitchers and only 12 position players? If that's well, I think if we make that decision, I think that Billy's uh, already putting a lot of attention, if that's the route to go, into what the makeup of your roster would be. And um, there's a lot of teams in our league that had a three-man bench all year, which is what you will be talking about. So it can be done. Your team has suffered a lot of pitching injuries in recent seasons. Yes. What and before, that, before then, very few. Before 17 years before then. 16 years before that. So, so should I take that to mean that you believe it's an aberration? I think that there are some things that have happened with our, uh, with our <laughs> staff that um, could be cyclical. I can guarantee you that every year we look into it to see what's going on and how we can improve. And we've done this since day one that, uh, that I've been here. In the last two years, uh, there's no doubt that some of the things that happened uh, we're extraordinary in a rotation that we've, that we've looked at at this from about every angle you can, have some very, very 
bright people looking at it. And when there are some adjustments to be made, we have. And when it's been worked out that it's just a cyclical thing that happens in pitching, um, you know, there's not much you can do about it. But yeah, we've looked at it, no doubt. Mike, is there any has been, there been any consideration of using him the way he handed sort of a spot starter? A spot uh, starter? Yeah. As a ace, you know, fish him once a week in DH and the game. Yeah, well, there's a lot of there, there's a lot of different ways that I think uh, Shohei uh, can be used, and um, you know we certainly want to get him out there as many times as we can to have him pitch because he's a premium talent on the mound, and we're going to try to get him as many looks as we can in the batter's box because he can uh, he can really hit. So you know we're gonna we're gonna consider a lot of different things. There's no. Could you share a couple of the, the, the better ideas you've had? So well, there's a lot of things on paper that we're looking at, but uh, right now, um, you know, this could change in two weeks, could change the first month of the season, it could change at any time. The only definite is we're certainly committed to getting him a look as a two-way player, as a hitter and a, and a pitcher. Now, how many at-bats that translates to, how many starts that translates to, uh, we don't have a crystal ball, but we'll... We're gonna we're gonna work through it. Where do you see him batting in the lineup? Uh, let's get him let's get him out there and get everybody together and see where he uh, see where he fits in. Yeah. He's gonna have a schedule much like a regular player where we do defensive fundamentals in the morning. Uh, we'll do individual skill work and also we'll do team fundamentals before we hit. At the time that we've done our individual school work, our team fundamentals, guys have thrown their bullpens. Um, every pitcher will do his conditioning and be done for the day. Uh, Shohei's day will continue with batting practice and bunting and all the things you need to do in the batter's box, the base running component. So um, he won't have any longer day than Mike Trout or Andrew Simmons because this is what a regular player does. But instead of taking ground balls to shortstop, Shohei's going to be working on fundamentals that a pitcher uses, so the timing won't be anymore. It'll be like a regular player, but it will be, um, there'll be a little more workload for him to get ready than anybody else that's in the rotation, obviously. Are you entertaining the idea of him hitting on the days that he pitches? He's only done that one time, I believe. No, about, about a dozen times. Uh, one, his last game, I think he did it, but he he, very rarely, yeah, but very rarely has he hit on days that he's pitched. That was last year. Two right. years ago when he was hitting, he did it about 10 or 12 times. Right, but it's, when he was you know, it's, that's, yeah, it's less than half a start. So I think the, um, the thing about being an American League team, if you commit to that um, and you, you, you forfeit the DH from the beginning of the game, there are some certain strategic things that can come up and be, um, you know, and, and, and not work. But we're not going to rule it out. You're not going to rule it out? Not going to rule it out. Not going to rule anything out. There's a, lot of, there's a lot to sift through. Mike, given the amount of information uh, available now, do you think the modern day player understands the game better than players of previous generations, or they just use different language? I think, like, well, I think like all of us, we understand like what we've been seeing, now why it's happening. And a lot of things have been quantified for us that weren't you know, 20 years ago. I think that a major league player um, has access to a lot more data than ever. Uh, so from the coaching component, it's important for us to take the data, um, see how we can apply it into, into each player's game to make them more proficient. And a lot of the data is not really going to be functional to a player. You know, wins above replacement, all the things that, you're, that we're talking about that are kind of in the macro are not really going to affect a player. But the amount of data he gets specifically on exit velocities if you're a hitter, uh, spin rates if you're a pitcher, these are all applied that quantify things that, you know, a lot of e even even hitters were kind of trying to surmise as they, as they were in the batter's box. Where do I hit the ball the hardest? What pitch should I look for? A lot of this is much easier for them to to get that information and grasp it now. So, um, you know, it's, like it's all important. So your answer is, for the most part, yes. You think yes. they do understand the game better? Um, they understand why some things happen. Yes. No, there's no doubt. They understand. 
like they understand not only they hit the ball harder when the pitch is in this location, but why they hit it harder. The swing analysis has gone a long way in the last 20 years, and now it's even taken some new steps forward in the last uh, two years. So all this is is making players um, uh, better prepared. The information helps them to uh, to maintain a high level of play that is hopefully more consistent. Uh, so I guess the short answer is yes, and um, you know, and our our job is to take the information and really translate it into a format that players can apply. And one thing about being in the batter's box, um, if anybody here has ever played baseball, you understand the need to react and not the need to read. And um, if you give players too much information that is filling their mind and they can't get in that zone they want to be in, it can be counterproductive. So it has to be balanced. Otani is a smart last one. He's, uh, he's very fast also. Is that something that you can really utilize as a tool or do you want to kind of protect him a little bit in that sense? No, I think if he's going to play baseball, he's going to play baseball. And like any player, you want him to go out there and play as aggressively as they can. So if he's running the bases, just like the rest of the guys on our team, uh, you want him to run the bases aggressively. And he does have very, very good speed. Um, you know, um, what situations come up where you might be able to utilize his speed, um, you know, it remains to be seen. But if he's playing baseball and he's DHing and he's on the bases, he's a runner. He's not a pitcher, not a hitter. He's a runner. So we want to apply that. Mike, other than Talent, you know, the ability obviously to get in the pitch and get into the What do you think are the factors that have kept a two-way player from the before? Is it the wear and tear in the body? Is it you know, not enough hours in the day to call those skills? Is- yeah, the closest we got, I think, uh, you know, Boach used Baumgartner, I think, one time to DH in a game. You know, we haven't seen much of it. You know, back um, 50 years ago when there was no DH, pitchers hit on the day that they would hit. Um, I think it is a difficult proposition to do two things at a major league uh, level, as far as being a um, being a uh, you know high level pitcher and then flipping and being a high level level hitter, uh, which you have to be because of you know major league hitters on a team there aren't many of them, you know there's only so many of them and most of these guys are really proficient so you have to be better than those guys to warrant getting at bats. Uh, why it hasn't happened as much, um, I, got, I have to think about the physical demands of what it takes to pitch a ball game. Um, and also, most pitchers were on a four-man rotation, so there wasn't a lot of time in between, you know, 50 years ago for a guy to get in the lineup and play another position. It just, you know, didn't happen. So, historically, you know, you have a D- DHs that are really, really good hitters, and most pitchers aren't going to hit better than your DH. So it probably hasn't come to the surface as much. Um, but, um, you know, we'll see. I mean, it's a, I think what Shohei, what we're projecting to do is going to be uh, very unique. And it could be something that's extraordinary. So we're going to take it one step at a time and, and see. Do you have a preference? How much do you think well, that obstacle has been convention? You know, like you have a guy like Mike Owens, you know, who's a diamond back, terrific hitter. Yeah, it's, it's tough to do when you're. It's tough to do when you're a pitcher. It's easier said than done. I mean, there's recovery time. There are times when you're not feeling better. Plus, to really gauge it, you know, you're talking about is a pitcher going to be able to pitch and get 600 plate appearances to really see if he has an impact. That's that's a tall order. So. Um, I think just the functionality of are you you know um, are you going to pitch and still be able to, to hit or are you going to be like the kid from Cincinnati playing the outfield and coming into pitching a little bit you know um, there's there's you know there's different there's, there's probably different balance you have to look at it. so why it hasn't happened I think that it's tough um, will Shohei be um, starting a trend I don't know. Well, we'll see, but uh, you know, to be 
proficient major league level at pitching and hitting enough to where you're out there getting 400 plate appearances and starting 30 games is a uh, it's a tall order. And um, you know, I think Shohei knows it. We know it, and we're gonna see how this thing uh, blossoms. Mike, you're a fairly old school manager. What finally got you around to the idea of? Uh, Get to find old school. <laughs> uh, older than 45. <laughs> well, my age is older, but I don't think you ever stop growing in this game. And uh, I don't think um, I don't think you ever lose your creativity in, in, uh, in baseball in this game. And I think that this is an opportunity for all of us to get creative with a special two-way talent. That's what we love to do. Mike, you, there's talk about already about spring training, and you've been thinking about the starts and whatnot. Has there, any been, has there been any discussion about transitioning Shohei from the Japanese style of spring training, which has been much more intense, but with days off, and they use that those days as recovery days? You know, you're going to have to slow them down a bit. And has there been a discussion of that? Um, our pitchers, uh, we we have built-in days off for guys, even though our schedule might have a day. You'll see our guys are go through a very limited workout. I've never heard of a pitcher saying they don't get enough days off in spring training. These guys, it's a, it's a life of Riley. It's nice. <laughs> you know what life of Riley is, Pedro? If you're that old or you're not old enough. Um, so that's not going to be an issue. Uh, there's certainly a, um, there's definitely a benefit to a recovery day. Our guys, uh, we do it all the time and just try to pace guys up to where they have to be when the season opens and uh, Shohei will be no different. So be a dialogue with him about what Yeah, we're going to get a little, we're, we're starting to get information from him. We've already talked about to whatever extent we could what his usual routine is to get ready uh, in bullpens, get ready for a season, and uh, we'll continue to get information and, and uh, put together a program that is tailor-made for him, and that's what we do with every pitcher. How did you find out about the signing and what was your reaction? Uh, Billy told me, and um, I was excited. What kind of uh, second baseman would you like to have? You're talking about Shohei at second? Or? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a good question. <laughs> Moving on. You need a second baseman. Um, well, we're looking at depth in a number of areas, and I think we have some guys that um, you know, started to improve as second baseman. Caleb Cowher made a lot of strides. Um, but I think the over, our overall team and our overall depth on, depth on the offensive side needs to be addressed. And if there's going to be somebody at second base that um, can be a, a, a little bit more of an offensive force, I know that Billy's going to consider it. But certainly not with breaking down what is a core strength of our club is our defense up the middle. Uh, we're terrific up there. And I don't think that Billy wants to uh, mess with that chemistry. Uh, but there, you know. That being said, there's a need for offense in our field, that's for sure. Speaking of uh, core strength, do you think uh, Cole Calhoun was totally healthy last season? And, and yeah. what are you expecting from him? Last year was a down year compared to his, his track record uh, so far. So, you know, so I think if you looked at some, if you look at some numbers, it wasn't as, as down as you think. I'm talking about internal numbers, but he definitely, um, you know, uh, he came back. And uh, said he felt great. Um, he was running well, so all the markers were to say he was he was over that uh, surgery he had you know, in the off season um, you know, a couple years ago. Um, but I don't think his I don't think his season was that out of bounds. To the question was he hundred was he healthy? Everybody the players going to be a little nicked up. But I think Cole um, Cole did a lot more for us. He looked some of his internal numbers. They were really close to what you would anticipate. Is there anything that uh, Martin Maldonado is going to do or has been told to do to prepare for another 120 games next year as opposed to I think the first time last year? You know, you can train to be an astronaut all you, all you want to. You get down to space, you don't know what it's like. He's done it now. I think he understands that, you know, what he needs to do and um, and, and, and what he needs to do to, to be ready for his season. And, um, I think he trained well, and I think he held up well. He played a lot. There's no doubt. When you play that much that, especially on the offensive side, you're going to feel a little bit because your arms are going to get tired, and we've all been there.
I thought he held up remarkably well the things that he needed to do behind the, to do behind the plate he did on a, on a nightly basis. Who do you envision batting leadoff next year? Um, let's wait till we get all our pieces together and then we can we can kind of juggle them and see how they're going to fit. Um, as a team, I think it's it's it, it, it's pretty easy to see where some of our shortcomings was. Our all-base percentage wasn't what it should be. It's definitely our slugging percentage. We walked. For, our walk rate was fine, but our batting average was low as a team, which affected some of those other numbers. Um, so if you look at our general OPS, what we're looking for, we're looking not as much OPS, but just on base from a guy who leads off, and then we can. You know, we can move it down and see, you know, get to the middle of our guys with guys on base, hopefully, and see how it goes. But who that guy's going to be right now is a little early to, to see. What concern are you about trying to replace what you used last year? Um, you know, why was incredible for us. Um, I think that there's other guys who are going to get an opportunity to do some of the things that he did. Um, I think it's a, uh, it's definitely a void that we feel we're very comfortable we can fill, but it's uh, not, certainly not taken for granted what he did because he was remarkable for us. Can you see Jim Johnson fitting into your bullpen? Well, I think that uh, you know, Jim's a guy that has a lot of experience. His arm is still really good. I think there's some things. Um, from an analytical, an analytical basis that we feel we can do to help him. And, um, you know, all the other markers in his game are good. I mean, his velocity is good. He spins the ball very well. So where he fits in, again, let's see what the whole unit looks like, and then we can take one step at a time. What do you mean by analytical things you can do? There's some things like, you know, just just on his um, some of his pitch usage, some of his spin rates on different grips, things that maybe a uh, pitcher doesn't sense they're not as proficient as, as they, maybe they feel they are, you know, or some things they feel is not working that really does line up to work much better. This is kind of analysis I think has helped a lot of guys understand. What was your relationship with uh, Josh Paul like uh, JP, what, yeah. Well, if I can say it exactly where I feel it, but um, we have like a we got like a big brother, little brother relationship. You know, I, I shake my head at him sometimes, and you know, I think he gets uh, pleasure in kind of, you know, poking me a little bit here and there. Um, one thing about JP is um, he's got a uh, he's got a tremendous baseball intellect. Uh, he's very bright. He's hungry to learn. And I think that uh, his personality blends in just with our group of guys and, and what's important in setting an environment. So we're excited to have him. All right, guys. So Mike, Mike, is this like coming I mean, next season going to be more like an experiment season, like testing season? I, I sure hope it's not an experiment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. I don't know if we want to be experimenting um, with a championship run, but I think in in regards to uh, having a unique player like Shohei, um, there are going to be some things that uh, that we're going to look at that maybe haven't been done in baseball uh, here in the United States, but it's things that he's done in Japan. So, therefore, our comf comfort level that he's going to be able to come and and compete is very high. I don't look at it as an, ex as an experiment. I think like any player, you can call any season experiment when you're trying to shuffle a lineup or you're looking at some things, but uh, we, have, we have a real good idea that Shohei's gonna be able to do the things that we're gonna ask him to do. And hopefully it's gonna be a very, very successful season for us and lead us to a championship. And um, he's, uh, he's gonna be, you know, be part of that for sure.